have my water here. Give me a moment to get situated. Yeah, thank you so much for being here, everyone. Thank you, Victoria, for organizing this globally. And uh, Mark and Ina, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a great honor to be here. And uh, anyway, as you know, I'm Victor Acevedo, and I'm going to do a little sort of encapsulation of uh, the trajectory of my career that started in traditional media and quickly went into digital as I became aware of it when I was in art college. But they were, didn't actually have studio classes yet. It was only existed as a survey topic. Uh, but I saw that was the future. However, when I was in traditional media, painting and drawing, I already had this sort of uh, interest in art and math and art and geometry. And I was interested in M.C. Escher. So these are uh, some details of some studies of, of work that I did, tessel zoomorphic tessellation work that I did based on Escher's uh, work in the similar uh, genre. And I had an opportunity in 1979 to go to the uh, Escher Foundation when it was in The Hague and make transcriptions of his original notebooks, where, which were tessellation studies, so I could really see how he built those zoomorphic patterns. And the one on the top, uh, I guess the top right, where you're looking at, it, is kind of gives you an inkling of what his uh, zoomorphics look like in their native or raw format. They were actually built on graph paper. And uh, so it occurred to me that this was kind of a graphical, traditional media graphical harbinger for digital, the digital paradigm, with the linear plotting of lines with a starting point and an end point was very much like vector graphics or spline-based graphics. And then you had this pixel grid, which is very much like raster graphics. So that was a thought I had. Well, this was kind of, uh, and I, I didn't think of that at the time because I was immersed in traditional media. But later I go, wow, there's a direct connection. And that kind of, when I became aware of uh, digital uh, technologies for making images, which they called computer graphics then, and that was through Gene Youngblood, who taught a survey class, Expanded Cinema. And he studied what was happening at NYIT, and he presented it to us as Art Center students. And uh, so that's where sort of the light bulb went on. So anyway, I better not spend too much time on that one. But so then I, I also got into Buckminster Fuller's work, and the idea of uh, all space filling polyhedra was kind of a natural habitat in that domain. Of course, everybody knows the geodesic dome, but he also wrote these two large books called Synergetics, The Geometry of Thinking, and it's very heavily based on uh, a view of the world and energetic phenomena that's mapped over polyhedral phenomena. So kind of bringing that into uh, the work, I was kind of interested in going from 2D polygons to 3D polyhedra all space filling. And, and something I didn't talk about is I quickly released the parameter of having the foreground background toggling that Escher did perceptually. Where, you know, you, you look at its birds and fish and you have the, you know, the background foreground. So I released that. So I, I used what's called open packed strategies for polygons where you have these abstract shapes. Uh, you can see there on the bottom right so I'm allowing the interstitial non-zoomorphic shapes to be part of the periodicity. And then I also was into this sort of randomness with underlying chaos. Uh, so this, and this was kind of a hybrid of 2D and 3D. Uh, you have the hexagonal tessellation of polygons, but you also have this cellular take on those hexagonal domains that could also be uh, cubicle seen from the three famous three-quarter cube and and then you can build out from there so i was still doing oil painting so that previous study was a preliminary to a painting like this the other influences were Salvador dali the surrealism and uh also cubism and the way that that vector went from saison into picasso and brock breaking down space, reinterpreting it, connecting figure and ground. So it was kind of a, a hybrid of uh, approaches that had already been established in the late 19th century into the 20th.
but at the same time, quickly moving into computer graphics because, you know, by 1980, I was aware the century is almost over, the party is almost over, you know, everything's been done, you know, as a young art student, what's next, you know, oh yes, computer graphics, digital, that's the future. So that's, it took me off on there and I just stopped painting. 1984 is my last oil painting. So this is an early, act. I started in computer graphics, digital art, 1983. This is from 1987. And this is almost like an illustrator type of program, uh, purely vector based. It did have a Z buffer, however. Uh, it's called, it was called Artworks. It's, you'd be hard pressed to find a copy now. You know, it ran on a PC, it was pre Photoshop. So here's a little bit of the Buckminster spherical uh, inf influence coming in, spherical domain, along with the uh, open packed polygonal zoomorphics and a bit of surrealism. So it's always a amalgam. And I thought this might be fine. So I went through this similar process. This is uh, from about 89, 91. So I was, get, I was working with the Cubicomp then, and that was one of the early, an early uh, 3D modeling and animation package that ran on the desktop PC that had that kind of capability. Some of you know that, uh, remember that system. So, and this I thought was kind of funny as I still have a lot of floppy disks. This is the medium or media that we saved it, the files on. And, you know, as a uh, popular computer graphic end user piece, you know, personal computing, you know, this, the capacity of this was one, I think, what, 1.4 megabytes, you know, five and a quarter, something like that. So it's like everything was scaled down. It was pretty, pretty funny. And this was iris printing. That was a proof from the iris printer. And that was kind of, at the time, those of you, you remember the iris? Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, to move quick, like, so I want to show some videos. So this is kind of a, a piece that I, that I just kind of rediscovered. It was from a, a study for another piece called X Hour that many people have seen but it was, a, it was a ramp up to it. So this kind of brings that all together of this kind of uh, surrealism. It's called Tavern Mirror. And you got the space frames and, uh, and it has a lot of other charged uh, content along with the, the formal underlying structural components. So that's kind of, in a sense, my aesthetic. Uh, I think that's it developed. So we'll just, how are we doing on time? Okay, a little excerpt of each. Okay, there. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, okay. They're they're short, but I'll 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 stop them sooner. Okay, so that was a piece, uh, collaboration with a circuit bender, a guy named Igor Amokian. Uh, that, that's fairly recent, I think that was from last year. And then this is another collaboration with a free jazz structuralist composer named Richard Wood. So <laughs> a little abrupt change. So one thing I want, another point I want to share is I've been investigating uh, real-time video workflows, working with software that it, VJs would use, but using it high res and recording it and bringing it into a standard, uh, you know, edit timeline. So the some of these graphics are popular, or these videos utilize that component. So I can do these real-time jam sessions 
to the track and then take the cherry pick the best bits and bring those into the video timeline. So that's that's kind of fun to, to do that. And of course, these can be before, be performed live in a live mix. So, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I can use keyboard or MIDI controller, and I use VDMX is my my you know favorite software to use, which is kind of like Resolume. It's very p powerful uh, VJ software, so to speak. I mean, it's way beyond the sort of the domain of VJ actually. So I'll play a little bit. Oh, there's there's uh, John's coming up, Jay Walt. Uh, do I have time for one little snippet? Okay, I gotta go back and uh, let's see. So that, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, thanks. Yeah. So that was called Terabyte Psychedelics, and, <laughs> yeah. and it was a collaboration with a band called Hookah, and they do this sort of uh, contemporary abstract improvisational music that's, you know, psychedelic, basically. So uh, thank you so much. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. So the next speaker is Jay Walt, the Domchek. 